relief in Dubai's mission control that after a journey of 300 million miles, their spacecraft had successfully slammed on the brakes and gone into orbit around Mars. Three, two, one. At the foot of the Burj, they celebrated too, the first Arab mission to another planet from a country of fewer than 10 million people. The space probe called Hope will be the first Martian weather satellite looking for clues to why it's losing its atmosphere. Say if there's a dust storm on Mars, and dust storms on Mars usually cover the entire planet, uh, how much impact does, do those dust storms have on loss of hydrogen and oxygen, and therefore uh, loss of the atmosphere? These are some of the studies that we're looking into investigating with this mission. HOPE is the first of a convoy of spacecraft reaching Mars over the next week. China's Tianwen-1 has already sent back a photo and will land a rover to study the soil. But the most ambitious mission is NASA's Perseverance. A landing that could be directed by Hollywood will put a rover on the surface and later engineers will attempt the first powered flight on another planet. No mean feat in the thin atmosphere. There is no end to our fascination with Mars. Throughout science fiction, there have been races of aliens, you know, some friendly, some less friendly. Uh, you know, we've in, in science fiction, we've sent people to grow potatoes on Mars and things like that. Now, though, actually, we can find out. We can find out. Could we grow potatoes on Mars? Could we inhabit Mars? Could we colonise Mars? Would we want to colonise Mars? I'm not certain that we, we would or we should. But we want to find out more about Mars. We want to find out the real stuff, not the stuff that people make up. Mars was once a watery world, but below its now barren surface, ice could remain, and with it, at least the signs of ancient microbial life. Our closest planetary neighbour still has plenty of mystery. Thomas Moore, Sky News.